بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله بيعرف توفير تو have our third session on Islamic plan for life and this session we study the topic of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what we know as dhikr which is a very fundamental topic in Islamic spirituality according to the Quran a remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the cure and treatment for all our problems it is with remembrance of Allah that our hearts can become tranquil can function properly we can discern properly we can act and face challenges properly and if we don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all problems start problems that can even affect our physical health and not only our spiritual and mental health so therefore we want to dedicate this session to the topic of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala In the book, first there is an introductory point which I think is very important and that is about the nature of human beings. We human beings by nature are very much changeable and adaptable. We can adapt ourselves to different conditions, different settings, environments, people. We can consciously or unconsciously be influenced and change. So there are lots of areas in which we can change. It's not that like our body, maybe we are not able to change everything, although even with body we can change many things, but there are certain things that we cannot change. But with your heart, with your mind, with your relations, with your understanding of yourself and the world and people, there are lots of areas that we can change and change can be positive or negative. One of the factors that uh, contribute a lot to this process of change is what you respect, what you have concern for, what you have interest in, what you love or dislike. If you love something positive, if you love someone positive, if you have positive thoughts in your mind, if you have positive intentions, they change you positively. Imagine if you have a day in which you only hear about bad things and think about negative things and meet negative people. How would be your day? Maybe even for many days or weeks to come, that would be a bitter day in your memory and maybe God forbid you would say things and do things and make decisions that you would regret later but if you start your day with remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with positive thoughts and ideas and intentions and meet beautiful people discuss beautiful ideas do beautiful work, charity work, study. I don't know your own work at the office goes well, your work at home goes well. 
how you feel. So the same person, the same house, the same, I don't know, workplace, the same family, the same community. But depending on how your mind and heart were preoccupied, it can make a big difference between two days of your life. So what we do in Islamic spirituality is that we try to take control of our heart and mind. We don't let anyone or anything to capture our heart or mind. They can present themselves to us, but we don't let them to take over the control. Sometimes it's not in my hand or it's my control to, for example, decide whom to see, what to happen, what to hear. Although there are areas that you can regulate and you know guide, for example, how much and how to read the news and hear the news and you know these things. There are ways that you can regulate, but you don't have full control. All of a sudden, you hear something, or a rumor may come, a lie may you know be told. Negative thoughts, negative ideas, unwise fear. Sometimes you don't have control, but you have control about how much you want to let them inside your heart and mind, how much you want them to preoccupy your mind and heart, how much you want to go after them. That's what you have control. So we try to have an active role and that is by deciding before it is decided for us by others. We want to decide, and this is our ability. Allah has given us this free will. You can decide about the country of your heart and to some extent your mind. No matter what educational systems you know they put you in, what you know ideas or news you know you are receiving, but you have control over the country of your heart and to some extent country of your mind. So try to run it in the way that you would never regret. You would just pave the way for your success. You would go from one success to another success. And that is to think. And thinking is a great thing. To think about good things. For example, think about virtues. Think about generosity. Think about kindness, about selflessness about being, I don't know, loyal, trustworthy, organized. Think about people who have these qualities. Read the stories about these things, hadith about these things. Try to meet such people. Try to act in this way. You see, little by little, and maybe actually after some time, very fastly and quickly, you would change. Now, in this process, what helps a lot is to have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the most perfect being, as the most beautiful, the most generous, the most knowledgeable, the most powerful, the wisest, the kindest, the most forgiving, the most comforting, the most supportive person in the center of your attention. If you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the center of your attention, then, inshallah, you will never go wrong. And that centrality brings other good things. It's like, for example, if I bring a good manager, then that manager helps me to bring good stuff, to make good contracts, make good decisions. If we bring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the center of our attention, 
and center of our love, center of our decisions, bad things go away. Bad thoughts go away. Bad people actually distance themselves from you. Very naturally and smoothly things go well. This is dhikr. Remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran tells us that Salat is established for different reasons. For example, inna salat tanha an al wal munkar. Salat prohibits doing bad things, ugly things, immoral actions. The real salat, salat that has life and soul, would not let us do bad things. Tanha an al does nahi an al munkar in a practical way. It's impossible to do salat with presence of heart. Enjoy your salat and then pollute yourself again with sins, with bad actions. How can someone honestly say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Iyya kana abud wa iya kana sta'in and then cheat? It's not possible. And if once you forget, the next time you remind yourself, then the next time you remind yourself. So finally, the problems and mistakes and forgetfulness would either stop or be reduced to minimum. So Salat is a stopping fahsha and munkar, but the dhikr of Allah the remembrance of Allah is even greater. وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ أَغِمَ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ Salat is a way of remembering Allah, which is the best way of remembering Allah. But actually, what is amazing is that these acts of worship, which are supposed to be acts of remembrance, act as signposts and act as power plants to generate lots of positive energy, lots of spiritual energy with which you can enlighten the rest of your day and night. You should remember Allah during Salat, during recitation, during fasting, during Hajj, Ziyara, etc. We should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these are made in order to help us remember Allah but also we would not stop there then we would extend that condition of mind and heart that kind of alertness that kind of consciousness mindfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the rest of day and life and Salat can do this Ibadah with Remembrance can do this. And this is why in our hadith says that only that part of Salat is accepted where you had presence of heart. If you don't have presence of heart, it can be valid from faqih point of view, but it's not accepted. There's a difference between saha and qabul. Something can be valid if you meet the legal faqih requirements, but to be accepted means to be able to get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be able to be mi'rajul mu'min, ascension for mu'min, needs presence of heart. And this is understandable based on what we discussed. So, Quran praises people who constantly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nice, nothing makes them makes them forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are people that neither buying nor selling would make them forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing. 
even when they are selling and buying and you know they have to be very careful you don't want you know to give for example less or some people don't want to give more anyway people have different reasons for being very careful when they buy and sell but even then they don't forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Quran praises such believers that constantly remember him what is zikr we can have a lengthy discussion about definition of zikr but to make it brief and simple zikr is a condition of heart and then mind that would lead to also some actions and this condition is caused by openness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a favorable way. You open yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because sometimes maybe I remember something, but I want to close myself. For example, I may remember my problems. May I may remember my enemies. Maybe I have some debts that I remember and I should remember, of course, my debts so that I can clear them. But day and night, these debts are in my mind. Day and night, these problems are in my mind. These are, day and night, for example, my enemies are in my mind. This is not zikr in our terminology, although you are remembering these things. Shaitan also remembers, you know, all the time to deceive us. He doesn't forget that. This is not called dhikr. Dhikr is not just remembering something all the time. Even dhikr is not just remembering Allah all the time. Shaitan remembers Allah all the time, but he's not doing dhikr. Dhikr is remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with open heart. Remembering him as your beloved. Remembering him with love. Remembering that brings you softness and humility. Remembering that gives you sweet taste. This is zikr, not any remembrance. So this is why I say you should open yourself and it should be in a favorable attitude. Not in a negative, uh, you know, hostile attitude. Zikr has three types. Zikr, remembrance by heart. We call it Zikr Qalbi. Or in Arabic, Zikr Qalbi. Remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by heart. Because that's where Zikr starts. Of course, it goes to the mind and the organs but in the heart, because it should come with openness of the heart and love of the heart. And that is the core of the dhikr. If you don't have this dhikr qalbi, in remembrance of Allah in your heart, the rest would not come. Yes, dhikr lafzi, inshallah, can come, but that's not useful if there is no engagement of the heart. So that's the root. You know, you can have a big tree without roots and bring it from one place, put it here, you know, for a few days and, you know, then it will collapse or it will dry out. Zikr al to say just La ilaha illallah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, without remembrance of Allah in the heart, is like having a tree transferred here without having any root. This is temporary wouldn't bear fruits, wouldn't last. So first, remembrance of Allah in the heart. This is very important and we should try to have this and increase it and maintain it and strengthen it because dhikr has degrees. Quran talks about shidda of dhikr. 
Mu'minin are ashaddu zikran lillah. So they can have degrees, levels. It's not just quantity, it's also quality. Zikr kathir and zikr shadid. Frequent and abundant remembrance and also intense remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we have zikr amali or badani, some people say, means physical remembrance or remembrance by practice or you can say practical remembrance remembrance through organs this is very important and that is when I am supposed to say or not to say to do or not to do go or not to go eat or not to eat drink or not to drink something I would be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I would observe his will and his pleasure Zikrullah in the kull ta'atin wa ma'asiyah that is remembrance of Allah which is an outcome of remembrance of Allah in the heart and actually also is a good way to test and examine if the remembrance of Allah exists in your heart then it should show itself when you are faced with masia. There is a suggestion of masia. There is a, I don't know, condition that you can commit a sin. If you remember Allah in your heart, that will not let you get into this masia. And if God forbids, if God forbids, you forget and get to that masia, you quickly regret and repent. And third, dhikr lafzi, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by our tongue, by our lips, which can be an outcome of dhikr qalbi, but it can also be sometimes baseless. In which sense? In this sense. That sometimes, because I remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to mention his names. Because I love him, I want to say salawat, I want to say la ilaha illallah, I want to say to Allahu Akbar. To keep my engagement with this remembrance of Allah more, even with my tongue and ear, because I say it, I hear it. Or sometimes I just say it you know, quietly, but at least I can hear it with my heart. I want to engage with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala more and more. A person who loves someone who likes to mention that person's name. But this mentioning by name for someone who remembers Allah in the heart is very good, very useful and helps him to concentrate, helps him not to be... Uh, sidetracked plus by reflecting on different names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you can think about different ways of improving yourself different ways of connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala different ways of finding solution for your problem sometimes for example I ask Shifa say Ya Shafi sometimes I you know want Hikmah I say Ya Hakim sometimes I want someone to be close to me I say Ya Anis, Ya Munis, Ya Anisa Man La, Anisa La, and so on and so forth. It's beautiful. But if my heart is heedless of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and my actions are the same as actions of people who don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I just keep saying La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, I have a, a tasbih or rosary in my hand, but it has no impact on me, and actually maybe even sometimes deceives me that you are a good person because you are saying these sex then it's not helpful so let's remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by heart in the time of actions 
and also invocate his names. That's beautiful. To say more la ilaha illallah, to say more, I don't know, salawat, more subhanallah, more tasbih of Lady Fatima, which can be said even uh, independently, doesn't have to be after salat. These are very good. I don't want anyone to stop them or reduce them, but I say if they don't come with remembrance in the heart or remembrance at the time of making decisions or doing things or saying things, then this becomes like a tree without root. And this cannot last long, plus it can sometimes even be creating problems because you may be proud of yourself, you may suffer old, you may show off, or you may become more heedless. So let us remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all three ways, by heart, by practice, and by tongue. Then there is a story here about Majnun. Layla and Majnun, or some people say Layli. Layla and Majnun are known as two figures who had outstanding relation of love. Majnun was the lover, Layla was beloved, but Majnun was showing lots of love and Layla was not showing that much love. She was very reserved. But it seems that she loved Maj uh, Majnun but didn't show. There are many stories about them. One story which is mentioned here is that one day Majnun was passing by a place, uh, sorry, a person who was praying. And passed in front of that person. For example, suppose this person had opened his prayer mat, his sajjada, and uh, Majnun, you know, passed in front of him, between him and his torba, for example. And this person was upset after finished Salah, said to Majnun, why you are passing in front of me when I am praying, praying. Why you are distracting me? And Majnun said, you should, you know, revisit your prayer. <laughs> this is my wording. You should revisit your prayer and the way you pray. I am in love with Layla and didn't even see you. <laughs> My eyes were open, but I was so much thinking about my beloved that I didn't notice you are there. <laughs> How can you say your prayer and talk to your beloved Allah and then you saw me? If you are a real lover of Allah, you should not have noticed me going in front of you. This is an example. Of course, we don't want you know, to justify people passing in front of those who say prayer. But this is a beautiful reminder, beautiful story that, you know, if we are not reaching that level that we don't notice anything around us, as we have, you know, example, real examples of Ahlul Bayt Ali Musalam that when they were in prayer, many times things happened that they didn't notice. They didn't notice into, through the ordinary ways. But there is a reality in this story. So we don't want to say we have to reach that point, otherwise our Salat is useless. But it means that it is a, there is a possibility and when your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases, your focus in Salat 
increases your attention to Allah intensifies and other things either disappear from your mind and heart or if they appear they appear in a way which would not disturb you they appear like a stars in the sky which is enlightened by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if the sky of your mind and heart is enlightened by the light of Allah other things that come under this light and surrounded by this light would not be a problem and they would not cause distraction or worries or stress but when there is darkness then anything can become a challenge a threat okay now what are the outcomes of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one outcome which is very much highlighted in the Quran is tranquility inner peace in our world today this is one of the most needed things it is true and it is of course very sad that still many people don't have enough food they don't have access to they don't have enough food they don't have access to healthy water proper education shelter many people unfortunately it's very sad but there are many people who have these basic needs and therefore now they are more understanding the spiritual need and emotional needs now is the time that maybe more than ever in the past we have a high percentage of people who suffer from men mental illnesses so much stressed so much depressed even some people want to commit suicide in some of the most affluent countries the number of people who are depressed or people who want even to go further and you know commit suicide there are different degrees it's not that everyone who is stressed is depressed no you know all this there are different degrees but there's a range of people who have problems and finally it can reach the level that they think it's not worth living anymore or for example people who resort to alcohol drugs and things like that why because now they don't need to worry about food or you know water etc that's the time that more underlying human needs emerge And unfortunately this is happening when faith has become weaker community social life has become weaker families are breaking down individualism is spreading so we have lost lots of protections and have become exposed to these problems And this can increase unless we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we go back to our values and our family life, our community life, our human life. Otherwise, things will go to worse. The Quran says, Allah bi dhikrillahi taqma'innul qulub. The creator of man. Who knows better than anyone else what suits man and what harms man says it is only with remembrance of Allah that hearts come at rest nothing else can put your heart in peace and rest and comfort and tranquility remembrance of Allah 
anything else it's like a fake medicine that you give to your heart when it has problems ya man ismu dawa un wa dhikruhu shifa un oh the one whose name is medicine whose remembrance is healing anything else is fake medicine <laughs> they can actually be a poison you think by becoming rich you will become better you will have tranquility you think by becoming famous you think by having you know more for example na'uzubillah haram relations you can become better no it's only with remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so one outcome of dhikr is tranquility and peace another is this remembrance of Allah with all the beautiful qualities and with all the great things that he has done for us makes us fall in love with him. You would become very much loving him and grateful to him. Another thing is that your moral problems would start disappearing. Because ghafla, heedlessness, is the root of our problem forgetfulness you know opposite to that are two things kafla and nesya heedlessness or forgetting either you forget or you are heedless temporarily when a mu'min for some time is heedless he becomes like a person who has forgotten god but he has not forgotten god he has God in his mind, but at this time he is heedless. He's like temporarily forgetting. Then we become subject to lots of problems. But if we are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I will not become jealous. I will not become selfish. I will not become greedy. Maybe it takes time so that all the traces of this problem disappear. But that's the process. Remembrance of Allah helps us in avoiding sins. How can I make sins and commit sins and I remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way that we explained? Remembrance of Allah makes you humble. Those who are arrogant, they forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, how can a person who has a condition of dhikr feel, you know, superior to other people, become proud negatively, become arrogant. Remembrance of Allah also would help you to have more concentration, more control of your attention. Remembrance of Allah makes you more successful in your studies. You are, a, I don't know, a university student, you are doing your degree in different subjects, but remembrance of Allah helps you even in those secular subjects. Remembrance of Allah helps a businessman or woman, an engineer, a doctor, a researcher, a scientist, because it gives you focus, concentration, control of mind, determination, and you can succeed. Also, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds to your capacity, enlarges your heart and uh, you can cope with problems, you can be given great tasks without being troubled. Then we have a discussion about what are the ways to increase and improve our remembrance of Allah. One important way is giving more attention to our Salat. To say your Salat on time. To say your salat in congregation, in jama'ah. To have a special place for salat. To prepare yourself for salat. To make salat, if not the most important, at least one of the important things in your daily routine. To plan things in the way that would not conflict with your Salat on time. 
This can improve your dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Recitation of the Quran with attention, with understanding, with tadabbur, contemplation helps a lot. By recita reciting the Quran, you tune yourself to the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to think and believe and behave. Thinking about the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the glory and majesty of Allah are reflected in the creation. And a scientist is working in his laboratory, her laboratory, on some aspect of creation. This can help with zikr. Those who are more educated, those who read more, study more, they are expected to remember Allah more if they have the right attitude, right attention. Attending gatherings, meetings, circles of dhikr, not just people who sit and do dhikr, that can be one option, but Anything which is a remembrance of Allah. Salatul Jama'ah is a gathering of dhikr. Seekers for learning, studying, discussing good issues. We study together a book on akhlaq. We study together a book on aqaid. We reflect on some hadith. We ask someone who is learned to teach us. These are gatherings of dhikr. There are people who work together for a cause, for community, for poor people, for charity, for peace. These are helpful in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because anything good is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and puts us in connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also to be meeting and interacting and accompanying good people one of the most effective and easiest way to ways to improve is to be with the people who are good already and you don't know how your mind and heart can learn and take without your notice positive things from positive people or god forbid negative things from negative people many times we don't notice there are things that we notice when we say okay i have to learn i have to become like this person but there are many things that you may not even notice and you get them easily naturally without too much struggle so we should try to be with people of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we mention only two because these two are very important and time is very short you can of course also say all the positive things will not be there you know so any positive outcome when you don't remember will turn into the uh, opposite but in particular here we mentioned two things based on the Quran one is Quran says Man an fa inna lahu whoever turns away from my remembrance would have a life which is very compressed very narrow vanka too much pressure, too much stress and challenge come. Sometimes you feel you are put in a corner and every challenge is coming. It's not necessarily because you have actually more problems than other people. It can be because you have not fortified yourself, strengthened yourself with remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all the positive power that it brings people who have power people who have money and people who don't have power and money can equally or even maybe those who have power of money can you know actually suffer more from this pressure and this narrow life another thing that is the quran says in verse 36 of Surah Zuhruf, وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرَ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقَيِّضْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا 
فهو له قرین those who turn away from the members of Allah those who don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they would be accompanied by a Satan who would be his قرین or her قرین قرین means someone who is with you would not leave you alone Remembrance of Allah brings good people around you and disperses bad people. But forgetting Allah brings bad people towards you. And a shaitan, one of the allies of shaitan, one of the uh, soldiers of Iblis, would be all the time with you. In order to free yourself from this company, you need to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then there are very beautiful quotations, some hadith uh, on the page 31, pillars of wisdom, very beautiful hadith that I would like you to reflect on them. And I would uh, read one of them, inshallah, at the end. Just before I end, I would mention the last point in this uh, discussion, and that is about obstacles for remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are four obstacles mentioned in the book. One is to go after our whims, our lusts, our lower desires, to indulge ourselves in physical, worldly satisfaction and pleasures. These are not going to stop. These are not going to become even less. If you go after them, they will take you more and more towards themselves. You become more and more thirsty for them and greedy for them. In Islam, we don't say, okay, you have to stop all the worldly uh, desires and you know, pleasures but we say you have to regulate it you have to control it and inshallah then you will enjoy even that much that you do more than the people who do 10 times more but they are never satisfied number two not to develop unrealistic desires to have unrealistic desires and dreams can make you lose your touch with reality it's very dangerous number three committing sins and not doing toba not repenting is a great obstacle for remembrance of Allah committing sin and remembrance would not come together if God forbids we commit a sin we should quickly do toba don't say, okay, I do Toba for a few of them later. No. It's like, for example, you know, if you have a room, a house to keep clean. If you say, I clean my house, you know, every six months, then it become a hell. As soon as something happens which makes the house unclean, clean it. Or, for example, you have a white shirt, for example, or light color. If it's unclean, wash it. Because if you let these unclean spots remain, then after a while, even if you wash it, they would not go away. It, they have become permanent when they have stayed too long. Number four, one of the obstacles of remembrance of Allah is to attend sinful gatherings, to meet, discuss, talk, watch, people or things that make you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When people talk too much about money, about dunya, they can affect you. Lots of movies, not all of them, lots of them. Lots of programs on TV, on internet might be harmful. Although there are good programs, but you have to be careful. And We have in Dua Abu Hamza that 
one of the things that Imam Zain al Abidin mentions as a possibility of not being able to be pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then being abundant is he says amra'aytani or something in this line alifa majalis al battalin fa bayni wa baynahum khallaytani oh Allah maybe you have found me accustomed to attending the sessions and gatherings of battalin who are battalin Battalin are the people of falsehood, people who waste their time. They don't have any serious thing to do. They sit together one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, just, you know, chat, I don't know, do something. I don't want to mention some examples, but I think you understand my concept that when we come together, it's very good. Many meeting each other, visiting each other, very good. But don't spend too much time without doing anything useful, anything serious. If it is just meeting and, you know, chatting, okay, half an hour, one hour maximum. But three hours, four hours, you know, I don't know, uh, doing uh, something that, you know, uh, is not useful, something that can be harmful, for example, for your body, something that can be harmful for your mind, for heart, no. This is not helpful for dhikr. Dhikr is helped by meeting people who are remembering Allah and they try to help each other with remembrance of Allah. A good friend is that in nasiya dhakara wa in dhakara a'ana. Or in nasiya dhakara wa in dhakara a'ana. If you forget, he reminds you. And if you remember already, he would help you. This is a kind of friend that we should have. Of course, I'm not saying stop your relation with people, but try to push it into that direction, inshallah. Now, the last thing, as I said, one of those hadiths on page 31. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, according to this hadith, says on the day of judgment, People will regret every moment in which they did not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that we did without remembering Allah, we would regret. This is very powerful. May Allah save us from that regret of Yawmul Hasa. Thank you very much. Please remember us your dua and hope to see you inshallah. Next week, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.